So here's a review of Kendi's book, How to Be an Anti-Racist, published in 2019. This review provides a perspective of a white man living in Africa. My name is Jim Harris. I've lived in East Africa since 1988, ministering with a focus on indigenous churches using the Luo and Swahili languages, um, also looking after local children and doing some chaplaincy ministry as well as writing research and this kind of production. I wonder whether the very popularity of this book that seeks to define black-white relationships, how they ought to be, in another sense represents a massive neo-colonial kind of demotion of voices from other parts of the margins, such as Africa and other parts of the world. I implicitly compare and contrast, and often explicitly also, the anti-racism issues in the USA with my experience living in Africa for an extended period. Frankly, Kendi's writing um, brings up many issues that are familiar to me in Africa, and I find that he and I are drawing many of the same conclusions. However, there's a double whammy that makes it difficult to see how Kendi is going to achieve what he seems to set out to achieve. If Kendi denies that Abonics could be considered a broken language, that implicitly suggests that, unfortunately, um, he's presupposing knowledge on American and European history that he may not have, yet that might be critical um, for understanding of many of today's race issues. The difficulty of defending African culture using English is related to the difficulty of expecting people who know tennis to appreciate a description of soccer that they have never observed if the language of tennis is the only language allowed. So Kendi endeavours to engage two things. Let's say one of them is African culture that is hard for him to put his finger on as a result of not having lived and been a part of African community in Africa. Um, and secondly, white culture that he says himself he can't figure out. Similarly for myself, I do not understand African culture and I don't think African people I engage with understand me. Um, this makes it very difficult to comment intelligently on um, life in Africa. I can only suspect that the difficulty I have in understanding African parallels that the Kendi is having of understanding Westerners. What makes this book interesting is Kendi's willingness to be reflexive and his strong interest on being able to battle um, with this issue of racism. Technically speaking, I'm reading the book, I think a reader should be aware that um, Kendi often builds straw castles, only to point out later, later the weaknesses in them. So this evolving nature of the text is its strength because it keeps you wanting to read, but in another sense a weakness because you do wonder, well, where is Kendi in the end actually standing? For me as a Christian, Kendi's expressed commitment to trans and homosexual issues says more about pragmatism in the contemporary West than about deep insight. One thing particularly that interested me about Kendi's book was his condemnation of colour blindness as actually being pro-whiteness. I think many of my less, in, less well informed colleagues um, do not understand this. Kendi's realised that anti-racism in North America um, actually ends up trying to make white North American culture the norm. The difficulty Kendi has in getting his head around what people are and what they're doing illustrates one of the problems in self, in white self-understanding and self-articulation. At the same time, that kind of screams at me to say, hey, look goodness sake, open your eyes. Today's secular Western, Westerners or white lives are rendered opaque by their self-imposed historical obfuscation. In other words, they deny ways in which their liberal perceptions arise from a particular interpretation of the Bible. 
this I believe is key to many of the issues that Kendi is investigating. Basically being to understand the white man, read the Bible. Of course Kendi, if he wants to maintain a reputation in the secular university system, has to avoid that kind of conclusion. And I think that will keep him floundering. Kendi acknowledges his, the influence the church has had on him, um, but then ignores that influence. I don't see detailed study of the scripture. So although he sees cultures as equals, he doesn't refer to Paul, the origin of that belief. In the thing that Kendi acknowledges and promotes, he portrays himself as a Christian. Now, open acknowledgement of that position would help him to expand his toolbox no end. Kendi identifies many of the kind of basic problems resulting in racism in the US, almost as if everyone is the problem. He blames capitalism, institutions, and even the African American population for promoting inequalities. So blacks to him can be as racist as whites, which raises the question where is Kendi taking us? Well, even if he's not realizing it. He's taking us to Jesus. So I'm very grateful for Candy, to Candy for raising issues that many people deny and are not familiar with. I'm even hoping that the issue he raises may help our case for promoting Vulnerable Mission here in Africa. For more about Vulnerable Mission, see vulnerablemission.org. For blacks to be themselves in the North American context seems to be of li limited legality and their spaces seem to be um, liminal. Yet whites are reluctant to remove their paternal hand from black communities. I think these issues cry out to be explored not only in America but also in Africa itself. Remembering that in America there is a dominant white population whereas in much of Africa there is not but yet the same principles are applied because of the influence and the power of the Western world often in governance in Africa itself. I think though it's very evident that when African or people of African origin are left to their only vices, their societies end up not particularly buoyant in terms recognized in today's world. So it will be fascinating to hear any outcome of Kendi's exploration of the context from which his people come, but I don't mean a two-week visit, which unfortunately wouldn't cut the mustard wouldn't get under the skin of the situation but kind of a 10 years of exposure to Africans in Africa. It seems in America as in Africa people kind of milk the difference in achievement gap in order to at times make money. Kenny comes close to realizing that white claims of objectivity are smokescreen to try to conceal their roots in uh, Christian scriptures. So Kenny recognizes in the university curriculum all disciplines are racist. Something that has major implications for us in education in Africa, which tends to be a lock, stock and barrel import from the West. So writing as someone who's himself been a victim to racism, so to speak, in a reflexive way, um, ready to repent and start again, is fascinating. Perhaps he's declaring theories as truths, plus his failure to explore the theological roots of what he's saying are the weaknesses in his book. Kennedy's insights of course are required in a place where blacks are in a minority which limits his um, perception as to what happens when blacks are in a majority. So for many Africans within Africa, Kennedy of course is in an extraordinarily privileged position to have access to that wealthy context and those powerful Westerners in a way that he does, linguistically, geographically, and so forth, that in, within Africa people very much struggle to get that kind of access, yet they are under the same system, if you like. So at the end of the day, although I'd, I'd love to meet Kenny and discuss with him, yet his proposal as to how to be anti-racist seems to be too much of a straitjacket.